Hey everyone, I'm Andy here. In this video, I want to talk about symptoms of bipolar during childhood, early childhood, and the adolescent stage. So basically, young kids and teenagers. But specifically for me, like what symptoms did I have back then? And how it influenced my life choices and that kind of stuff, like how I dealt with things, I suppose. So I remember when I was young, I had like an overabundance of energy. And I was told that that kind of thing is just how kids are. You either have kids that are really hyper or kids that are more reserved and than everyone in between. Excuse me. My nose is a little stuffy. Anyway, um, I remember the biggest thing that, that I remember is the excessive energy and also the lack of sleep. I would go days without sleep. I would go to, I'd be put to bed, I'd go to bed, but I couldn't sleep. Or if I did, I slept for like an hour. <laughs> and then I would just sit in my room listening to music. You know, back then I had a Walkman. So I would listen to tapes, you know, with headphones. And I'd wait for everyone to go to bed and then I'd wait an hour after they had been in bed when I knew they were asleep. And I'd get up. <laughs> and go watch television or whatever because I couldn't sleep. I saw a lot of old shows like the Mary Tyler Moore show, uh, Mr. Ed, I think, um, Gilligan's Island, all those kinds of things, uh, uh, TV shows. So it was, it was okay, but I... I just remember not being able to sleep, having excessive amounts of energy. Um, I think back to that time when I was that young, I do remember having mood fluctuations. Like one moment I'd be happy and then all of a sudden I'd be angry or sad and stuff like that. I think that right there... was a little bit of borderline, but it could also be bipolar. Not exactly sure, but I'm leaning towards bipolar because of the excessive energy. And then the drop, it's like up and then down, up and then down. So I'm thinking it's it was that uh, issue. So in my adolescent years, that is the toughest time of a person's life in terms of your body changing, your brain is developing, and, you know, at that age, there's so much going on. There's so much mood changes in teenagers because of the hormones that are racing through their bodies. And I still had the lack of sleep, the euphoric and or, um, oh, what's that word? Irritable. You know, like I was on this high and then boom, I'd crash. And at the time, my friends kept. You know, they kept pointing things out to me, like, it, 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 not in a nice way necessarily, but it still was pointed out. For instance, Amanda, what's wrong with you? You were just happy, and all of a sudden, now you're over here by yourself. Are you antisocial? Or stop being antisocial? That kind of thing. It wasn't 
that I was trying to be whatever it is that they were talking about. It's just at that moment I was having these intense, sad feelings. And I didn't want to be around anybody while I was experiencing them. And that's all that that was. I was... I had this uh, tendency that when I was with a friend or whoever that... if I felt... I, I felt like I was passionate about it, so I would talk about it, and talk, and talk, and talk, and talk, and I didn't realize that I was going on, and on, and on, and on, and a few people pointed that out, they're like, Amanda, you've been talking for like 15 minutes straight, <laughs> can you stop talking, <laughs> kind of, you know, those kind of situations, and I started having these thoughts, now, mind you, I was going through a lot back then. In 8th grade, I was suicidal because the year before my grandmother died and I had not dealt with her death. Um, so all that stuff came with me into my teenage years. So that was part of it. My body changing and all that stuff. So the symptoms kind of mirror what's going on in adolescence. So it's very difficult to, to see where normal behavior begins to where the bipolar comes in. So it's, it, it was hard, but I remember having the symptoms. I just didn't know that it was something bad or not bad, but I didn't realize it was a mental illness. <coughs> Excuse me. It wasn't until my early 20s when I started college that the true onset of mania occurred where I was staying up late writing papers doing homework you know not getting enough sleep and I still have sleep issues to this day I need bed so I can sleep I can't sleep without them I never could so I think that's proof to me that I do have hypomanic manic symptoms but it's really hard to tell when you're a child and when you're an adolescent and I think a lot of times these symptoms are overlooked in teenagers and children because a lot of times you hear about, well, it's normal for that age for them to act like that or whatever, whether you're young or you're a teenager. So I guess my message here is that to parents or caregivers or doctors or whoever, listen to the children and hear them. The same goes for adolescents. Don't just dismiss things because you think it's due to hormones. Oh, they're just being kids. Oh, they're just teenagers. It's not like that. <laughs> At least it wasn't for me. There was a problem. But I didn't know I had an illness until... Well... Oh, gosh... I think it was, I don't remember exactly, I think I was like 26, yeah I was about 26, 
Oh my God, I lost my train of thought. Oh, the, you know, uh, that was when I was diagnosed and I had, when I was diagnosed, I was experiencing the symptoms. But it's easier to tell in the adult years because you're more developed and there aren't as much changes going on as when you're a child and especially in adolescence. Like teenagers, <laughs> well, you guys know, um, it's difficult. So please don't dismiss when, people, when teenagers and children are sharing. Um, and please, please listen to them. It's important. Just because they're kids and teenagers doesn't mean that that's the only problem is, is, is the growing and whatever. Sometimes, most of the time, most people, not all, but a lot, excuse me, have symptoms of a mental illness, but they get overlooked. And hopefully, as the years go on, children and adolescents will be heard more. People will take them more seriously. I wish I had that when I was, when I was younger, to have the medicine that I have now. It really would have helped. But that wasn't the case. <laughs> but I have it now, and I'm doing okay. <laughs> so, um, that's the end of this video. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, like my face is all puffy and stuff. Oh, I think it's because I've been, I don't know what that is. Probably retaining water or something. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. I love you all and I will see you in my next video. Bye.